Claude just released their new data analysis feature. This is going to allow us to talk with our data using Claude easier than ever before. We can create visuals, we can create graphs, analytic dashboards. There are so many different things that you can do with this update and in this video I'm going to break it down for you so that you can use it best. Just like always, if you want to master AI, become more efficient in your life, become more productive, get on top of this AI revolution, then the AI Foundation's community is the spot you need to be. We have over 400 members in here focused on leveraging AI all day long. You have a community, a classroom with multiple different course modules, and also a calendar chocked full of live calls with my partner Carter and I and the rest of the community. I'll leave a link to join in the description or the top comment below. Now, in order to activate this feature, you wanna go down to your profile in the bottom left-hand corner, select your name, and then go to Feature Preview. Once you select Feature Preview, there are the different features in here that you can activate. For now, we have this new analysis tool that we can activate. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to turn that feature on, and now we're going to get ready to generate some charts and perform quantitative data analysis. And actually, I'm not going to be the one doing it, but Claude will be. Now, there are multiple different ways to view your data in Claude. Today, I'm just going to be showing you three of those, and that is going to be comparing your data, showing parts of a whole, and also viewing a data spread using a scatter plot. I think this will give you a good range of use cases so that you can tackle your next project. So number one, what we need to do is we need to have CSVs to upload because right now I do believe it's only CSV files that Claude is allowing for. In order to compare data, this is going to be the first data set that I'm using. All it is is a country, the country abbreviation, the year, and then average annual working hours per worker based on the year and the country. If I wanted to compare this data in Claude, I could upload that data set to Claude. So I'll upload it, the annual working hours per worker. I'll hit open. And now I can type out a prompt in order to compare this data. What I'm going to do is say, analyze this data and use it to create a line chart comparing the average annual working hours per worker across different countries from 1870 to 2017. So we're going to be able to see the ebbs and the flows of specific countries in regards to the average annual working hours. I'm going to send this off. And what you're going to notice is Claude has a new window that pops up in order to analyze all of this data. So it says, I'll help you analyze and visualize the data. Let me first process the CSV. So right now it's processing all the info within the CSV, and then it will use the artifacts feature in order to give us a visualization with the data that we just uploaded. So this is some pretty cool stuff, and you can watch it create the chart and the visualization uh, firsthand. So we'll wait for it to get done and I'll report back once it's complete. As you can see, just like that, in a matter of a couple of seconds, it's actually complete. And this is actually allowing us to get a visualization or to view the data much easier than before. You can hover over certain years and as you can see, it's interactive. So it's changing as we move our mouse and as we go through the chart. And what I like is it doesn't just give you the chart and then leave you out to dry, but what it does is it gives you kind of a rundown of what this is showing. It says overall trend, there has been a consistent decline in working hours across all countries over the past 150 years. It says France and Germany had some of the highest working hours, around 3,200 hours per year. And this was at the peak of the data in 1870. But as you can see in the mid 20th century, there was a sharp decline in working hours after World War II. And as you can see, it was a sharp, sharp decline. And we actually had to recover a little bit from that decline, but we're actually lower than those levels today. Now we got our visualization generated, but what's next? Well, you can keep on asking Claude questions about the chart, keep on modifying the chart, changing the style, the appearance. So that's what I'm going to do now. I want to add a few things to this, and I also want to change the appearance to a dark mode. So let's take a look at how we might go about doing that. I have a very simple prompt, and I think it's important to actually screenshot this chart so Claude can see what it currently has visually. So first I'm going to type out this prompt. I want to make this graph and page dark mode. And then I say make the legend in a box in the upper right and abbreviate the country so they all fit in the box. I want this to be more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Also provide more key findings beneath the graph. First, I'm going to screenshot this and this step isn't necessary, but I think it provides for uh, a better changing of the graph, if that makes sense. So I'm going to screenshot that real quick and save it to my computer. And then if you have the snipping tool, after you take a screenshot, all you have to do is hit control V and it will automatically upload that image that you just took a screenshot of. 
And now I can send off this prompt in order to change the appearance of this visualization, getting it more production ready for whoever I wanna share it with. And just like that, would you take a look at how much better this graph looks after one prompt iteration? It's now giving me key findings. So instead of throwing it over here in the sidebar, what it's doing is it's adding the key findings beneath the graph, which is much better in my opinion. It also has this in a dark mode now, which I think looks much better. This would be an example of how you compare data using Claude's new analysis tool. The next example that I wanna give you is how you can show parts of a whole. Now, this would be an example of creating a pie chart for your data. Claude does this very well in my opinion, and if you use the editing feature, as I showed you last time, and you modify the style afterwards, you can get something very good within two prompts. What I'm going to be doing for this one is I have this huge data set here full of car sales from over 130 different countries uh, over the past couple of years here. So since 2005, all the way up to 2022, what I can do is I can ask for very specific things. I could go to Claude and for example, I might want to know the top five highest selling countries based on car sales. And I might want a pie chart around that and I might want to do it for a specific year. So I'm going to say, do this for the year 2021. I want the five highest selling countries based on car sales and I want a pie chart created around that. But first you have to make sure that you upload your data by hitting add content and make sure this is in a CSV. So I've uploaded my car sales CSV right here, beautiful. And now I can send this prompt off and get a visualization showing parts of a whole out of this CSV data. So just like before, it's going to analyze the data first. I like how it goes and thinks step by step. At first, it's going to analyze the data, what does it see, and then it gets into creating the code in order to uh, draft up a visualization for us. Now, Claude, I must admit, is still a little bit spotty with its visualization. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but if you keep prompting with it, uh, a lot of the time it can get out what you want it to get out. So now we have this beautiful data, but as you can see, the legend is not working. So that's what I'm talking about. You just have to iterate that the legend is not legible and that there's nothing there. Once again, I say, I want to make this graph and page dark mode, abbreviate the countries. And then I say, make the legend actually legible. I then go on to say, I want this to be more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Also provide more findings beneath the graph. I always like those extra findings beneath the initial graph. That way we can read it. And it's almost like you're on a page or a report of some sorts going over your data that you're uploading. So I'm going to send this off now and I'm not actually going to upload the screenshot of the chart this time because I wanna show you that it works without the screenshot. But in my opinion, it works better if you provide the screenshot of the current state of your graph. That way it can see what it's actually editing. But let's see how it does without a screenshot. As you can see, it did not get me the result I want, but oftentimes Claude will actually give you this error running artifact feature. I think this is a new feature and all you have to do now is hit try fixing with Claude. And what it does is it automatically prompts for you and it goes in and it fixes the error for you. As you can see now, after fixing that error, it generates this beautiful looking pie chart with key findings. I like how it made the percentages if it went up in a certain color and also if it went down in a certain color. And it actually is comparing its key findings from car sales to the previous year. So I got the year over year growth from 2020 to 2021 and I didn't even ask for that. All I asked it to do is provide me key findings, which is very cool that it's going the extra mile and actually doing that. It's very interesting seeing how countries are growing or not growing. It looks like China grew 6.5%. India grew 26.7% from 2020. Such a cool way to view your data very, very quickly. The next way to view your data that I want to show you that Claude has the capabilities to do is viewing your data in the form of a scatter plot or viewing a data spread. This is one of my favorite examples because not only is it going to help you find the general trend of something, but it can also help you spot outliers in your data set. So the data that I'm going to be using for this specific use case is sleep and lifestyle data that I found on Kaggle.com. Basically what this is, is it has person ID, gender, age, occupation, sleep duration, quality of sleep, and a bunch of other factors that go into a person's well-being. What I wanna do is I wanna measure the sleep duration equal a better quality of sleep score. So what I can do is I can create a visualization around these two factors right here. As you see me highlighting them right here, I want to create a scatter plot around these so I can view a data spread, see if these two things relate to one another, see if there's any outliers 
And yeah, let's check it out. I can go to Claude and I can paste in that data set by hitting add content. And then I can type out a prompt. I say, create a scatter plot showcasing sleep duration versus quality of sleep. I want this to show the relationship between how long people sleep and how well they sleep with points colored by sleep disorder status. So that's another thing that I wanted to add in here. If we go back to this, as you can see within here, there is a sleep disorder status over here on the far right. And basically it's telling whether this individual who is tracking sleep duration and quality of sleep has a sleep disorder or has no sleep disorder. So I want that to be the color of the dot. And then I want the dots in the scatter plot to be sleep duration versus quality of sleep. And I wanna plot them based on sleep duration. So I then add in, have the X axis be one hour sleep intervals. And maybe I'll put and start at zero or no sleep. I could throw that in there if I wanted to. And then I can send this off and get this visualization created based on the data set that I was just showing you. I'll hit upload. And once again, it's going to analyze it and create that awesome visualization for us. And now we got this scatter plot generated for us. And when you hover over each of the plots, you can see the stats that go into this. You can see the duration they slept, the quality, and whether they have a disorder or not, which I think is really cool, very interactive, and I love how it's doing this. And as you can see, there is a trend going on here. So let's make this a bit more visually appealing by doing the exact same prompt, making it in dark mode, making the legend in the upper right, providing key findings beneath the graph, abbreviating the sleep disorders for the legend. And also I put add a regression line in the chart going through the scatter plot. So I can send this off. And it did make it look actually a lot nicer in this dark mode. We have a lot better of a legend up here and we can plot these points a little easier. I like the crosshair effect that it added. It didn't add the regression line yet, but it also added the key findings, which is amazing. I could even throw in another prompt if I really wanted to get that regression line. Next, I wanna show you how to create your very own analytics dashboard using Claude. Now we can stay in the exact same chat thread and get this artifact generated for us by continuing the chat because there's a lot of other factors in that sleep and lifestyle data that maybe I wanna compare. Maybe I wanna compress it into a dashboard so I can view it in a more aesthetically pleasing way. So I'm going to show you how I might go about that. I'm going to stay in the same chat thread and I'm just going to type out a very simple prompt. Since I'm using this data, sleep and lifestyle data that I uploaded earlier, I don't really have to worry about uploading that again, since it will use that as context in this situation. As you can see, what I said was create an analytics dashboard with tabs for navigation. That's pretty important because you can organize your information based on specific tabs. I say, here is what I want created. A visualization showing the relationship between BMI category, daily sleeps, and sleep disorders. And I want that to be a column chart. An analysis of sleep quality across different occupations, horizontal bar graph, and a visualization of heart rate patterns in relation to physical activity level and sleep duration in the form of a scatter plot. And then at last, I say, make these pages dark mode and have key findings and a summary of what each page represents and also why it's important. So very cool. And remember, what we're using is this data set right here. We're going to begin pairing a lot of these different categories with one another. But now that we're in Claude, what I can do is I can send this thing off. And with a single prompt, take a look at everything that it generated. It created a sleep analysis dashboard based on the data set that we uploaded. Now, this is just amazing. Let's take a look. BMI category, daily steps and sleep disorders. It gives us a summary of why it's generating the graph that it's generating. It says, this visualization examines the relationship between BMI, daily physical activity, and the prevalence of sleep disorders. Understanding these connections can help identify lifestyle factors that may influence sleep health. And then we have these different categories here and it's showing us column chart just as we requested and then providing key findings down here, which is very cool. And not only that, but it has these in tabs as we requested as well. So now instead of BMI and steps analysis, we can navigate to occupation and analysis. We can click on that. And as you can see, it gives us the exact same thing, but in a different tab. We can look at these key findings. We can go more in depth on each tab that we want. Let's go check on heart rate analysis. As you can see, this is comparing heart rate, physical activity, and sleep duration. This is a pretty cool and interesting looking chart. And remember, you can prompt and prompt and prompt with these dashboards and your visualizations. This was a single prompt that I used in order to get this entire dashboard generated with graphs showcasing my data in a visual way, key findings, 
summaries on why it's important. This was a single prompt that took me about 30 seconds to create. You can start to imagine the possibilities that are available to you when using Claude for data analysis. This new feature is absolutely insane. Can it do enterprise level data analysis? Probably not. Can it do huge data sets? Also probably not. Is it a little buggy? Yes, it is, but it's the start of something great. And learning how to use it now, even on smaller data sets, I've been using it on my YouTube data and it's been dramatically helpful being able to draw connections to things that the YouTube analytics dashboard just can't do. So I recommend you go and you try this out using some data that you have, maybe create a mock data set with Claude or ChatGPT and really just get integrated to this technology because you're going to have to know how to use it at some point and there's no better time than now. You also have to think this is the worst it's going to get. This feature is very cool and I'm excited that I got to share it with you. Once again, if you want to learn with us and you truly want to take your AI skills to the next level, then the ChatGPT community is the spot you need to be. Again, we have over 400 members in here, a classroom chocked full of AI modules. I think we have 80 plus modules in this course. This community really just gives you a roadmap. And if you go to the large language model mastery, I show you multiple different ways to perform data analysis in ChatGPT, but I've used all of these same tips that I showed you in today's video in ChatGPT, they go hand in hand. It's really an evergreen topic. So if you want more data analysis, we have it in the large language model mastery course here. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the group. But with that being said, that's all I have for this video today. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe. I would highly, highly appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video.